Welcome again to the official Cyblogs podcast. I'm Elf. I'm Amy. And we're here once again trying something ever so slightly different uh, to take you through in a little bit more detail some of the interesting science stories of the week. So what are we starting off with this week, Amy? Um, Elf, um, I believe actually that you have some interesting ice to talk to us about in various ways. I do indeed. (laughs) So... My entire focus this week is going to be on ice. <laughs> it's not just because I'm really looking forward to summer, but because <laughs> ice is actually really, really interesting once you start uh, getting into the details of the physics and chemistry that's actually involved. It, so what? It is. Um, we're also going to look at tractor beams, um, undersea silk, illegal lollipops, uh, some geoengineering, and possibly a bit of Feynman if we have a chance. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Alrighty. So jumping in, jumping into my ice before I get too excited, <laughs> um, we actually picked this up because of a video. There's a video called uh, Brinicle. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, that was released by the BBC earlier this week, and it's part of a new series called uh, Frozen World. I think it Frozen is. Frozen Planet. Flo- Frozen Planet, in a similar kind of vein to the BBC series Planet Earth and that lots of people uh, raved about a couple of years back. And what it is, is it's extremely rare footage of an icicle forming underneath the sheets of ice in the Antarctic Ocean. Uh, it's time-lapse photography, but you can actually see the brinicle forming and freezing from the bottom of the... Um, of the Antarctic ice and it's twirling right the way down like a tornado until it reaches the ocean floor at which point it doesn't stop it spreads out in this giant icy cascade that freezes the ocean floor and it freezes over a whole bunch of starfish and other poor little critters that kind of get in the way mm. and it's it's a beautiful beautiful piece of photography as well as anything else but the physics and science behind it are actually really really cool um, Amy was kind enough to actually do a, a blog post on this so she going to jump in and correct me when I get large chunks of the science wrong, I hope. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But the reason behind it is that the freezing point of water changes depending on the salinity of the water, depending on how much salt in it is in it. So when you get salt water that freezes, uh, preferentially it, it actually freezes as fresh water and it excludes any of the, any of the uh, impurities that would be in that ice. So in, in the case of salt water, those impurities are salt. So the salt kind of gets pushed to the outside of uh, these big freezing blocks of ice. That increases the concentration of salt around in, in the, in the seawater, directly around this ice, and it actually lowers the freezing temperature. And what that means is that you essentially get super cold water. So water that is colder than the freezing point of fresh water. And the only reason it can sustain that without freezing is, uh, is because of this high salt content. So what that does is that also makes it more dense. It starts to fall down. Uh, in the kind of water column underneath the ice sheets. And as it does, it cools all the other water that it's, it's uh, in contact with, and it causes a, it causes this kind of cascade of freezing um, a, as it drops down. So it's it's uh, you can kind of think of it being similar to uh, a normal icicle forming, but the whole thing is underwater. And it's all to do with the location of these little ice impurities in the crystal. But the most important thing is it's just really, really pretty amongst everything else. It is. It's it's almost exactly the way, um, well, it's exactly reversed to how uh, an icicle would form on land, where you get the cold sensor and then the layers, you know, forming around it with the brinicle as well. You get this super cold, super dense, super saline center that remains uh, liquid and then the ice um, ice sheets uh, coalesce around it and and yeah it, it keeps going until it's broken off by um, tides or, or currents or or you know it runs out of uh, it runs out of steam but but as it hits as it hits the sea floor it will keep going which is what this uh, this remarkable footage it's the first time it's ever been um, been videotaped been seen uh, shows and it was filmed underneath the uh, the Ross ice sheet, I believe. Um, mm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, New Zealand. 
Yes, <laughs> relatively. So yay, yay for us. If you haven't seen the video, by the way, uh, we've we've got links to it. It's absolutely amazing. It was taken in quite a constricted space as well, in you know freezing cold conditions, and they were watching quite a few of these different brinicles form. But the, it's just absolutely amazing. It hits the sea floor, and then it, it kind of shoots out like a freezing tsunami, and yeah. kind of in all directions at once. And I do feel a wee bit sorry for all the for wee the critters that get kind of stuck in its wake. Mm. <laughs> but but remarkable. And and uh, go and have a look as well. The BBC has been talking about sort of the experience of, of shooting the footage and of finding this. And, and the cool thing, it certainly does uh, bring into stark relief the value of publicly funded broadcasters who have money and time to go out and take this kind of footage. And the BBC is, is known for taking footage that, I mean, there are stories of guys being out on boats for a year at a time to get one piece of footage of one particular rare uh, beastie and it's incredible and if you do want a, a more kind of uh, intuitive understanding of how this works you can actually see a similar phenomena in really really pure water if you have uh, almost perfect purity water you can actually cool it down to below zero degrees without it freezing because the uh, the freezing process requires a nucleation point so usually um, that would be a piece of salt or a piece of dirt and the ice crystals form out from there ah. but if there aren't any uh, then the ice doesn't form. So there's great videos of YouTube of uh, bottles full of super cool water, and it's liquid water until you touch the bottle, at which point that creates a nucleation point for the ice crystal, and the whole bottle instantly freezes. It's absolutely amazing. That's a really cool trick. I've been cool wanting trick. to try it for ages, <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you have to have very, very high purity water. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> now, now to go and find out how to make super, super, super pure water. It's doable. We just need good filters, right? I think so. Yeah, really, really <laughs> good filters. <laughs> Elf, what have we got next? Uh, so the next one from me is going back to ice. <laughs> I hear you all uh, jump for joy. Uh, but this is really, really cool. So one of those properties of the salinity of ice changing the freezing point of water, I was looking for, for something else that might be easier to understand or just kind of more jaw-dropping. And luckily, I found it rather close by on one of the moons of Jupiter. <laughs> so... Um, as some of our listeners will probably be aware, the moon of Jupiter called Europa, which is one of the four Galilean moons, so Galileo uh, checked these out about 400 years ago, um, is, may, is covered in these thick, thick sheets of ice. And a few years ago, when one of the Voyager satellites, I believe it was, flew by, uh, they realized that this ice wasn't, you know, the ice didn't fill the entire moon. And so for quite some time now, we've believed that underneath this big thick crust of ice running over the surface of Europa, that there's, there is actually a big a liquid water ocean, probably salty water. And that makes Europa probably or one of the most likely places in our solar system that you might expect to find life. So this is where NASA is looking to go to try and find life, but they need to develop probes that can fly out to Europa and then drill down through these kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of ice. So the interesting thing this week is that in Nature there was a paper published reanalyzing a whole bunch of old observations of Europa's surface. So a lot of these were taken from footage from the Galileo satellite and they've been visually looked at before but not in a great deal of detail uh, with respect to other measurements as well like uh, the quantities of various isotopes, various salts, various chemicals, um, just whether they were cracked or whether they were smooth. They were looked at it, a very general idea to figure out um, how uniform Europa's surface was. What this particular group did is they looked at a weird structure on the surface. And Europa does have big cracks all over it, but what they focused on was one particular patch that had really, really... Um, had a huge number of cracks per unit area. So it looked like, a, they call it in the paper, this glorious term, they call it a chaos region, <laughs> which is exactly what it looks like. It's a huge region of chaotic ice formation. If you've ever walked on a glacier, you know that glaciers aren't smooth, and they're full of these huge big chunks of falling ice. And that's exactly what this particular patch looks like. And it's in a big kind of circle, which is also really, really strange. So these researchers looked at it, they looked at some of these old observations, and they came up with the model. And what they've found is that they think now that there's actually a dirty great lake, about the same size as one of the great lakes in America, sitting just under the surface of this ice. Ah. And the reason it can sit there stably, so it's like a bubble in the middle of these big thick ice sheets. Um, 
The reason it can sit there stably is because of these changes in salinity and the depression of the freezing point of water because of these changes in salinity. So uh, the long and short of it is far too complicated and honestly I don't understand it. You can go and read the nature articles if you want. <laughs> but the changes in salinity means that part of the surface of Europa melts while other parts of it freezes. And this causes a carving process in the ice, just like the carving that we get of icebergs here on the Earth. But this is occurring on the surface of one of Jupiter's moons, which is really, really cool. And this has probably been going on for about 70 million years, and it's just been recycling this water, and it's created this really chaotic region in the ice. So what fuels this was another big question that they asked. And what they look, what they found is that this is actually probably the shallowest part in the ocean underneath the surface. So uh, because the actual solid surface of Europa, the planet, extends up uh, towards the bottom side of this top ice sheet, <laughs> so layers, layers, lots of different layers we're talking about here, um, is that it provides a heat source. It's essentially like it's sitting above a volcano. Mm. And so this is being heated up and cooled down at the edges. It changes all these depression points. And it's just a really high mixing region. It's like the whole thing's in a kind of blender, but a blender fueled by the, the warmth from the very core of this particular moon. Yeah. The pictures associated with it are extremely cool. And it just goes to show how wide-ranging implications um, just the changes in the freezing point of water can have. Mm. Why is this particularly important and why it captured my information, uh, my imagination, sorry, <laughs> is that if this is true, if this is what's happening, first off it explains a whole bunch of other observations of Europa, on Europa, of all these other chaotic regions. There are quite a few. They're not that big, uh, but there are quite a few of them and they've confused us for a while. But the other thing is that it means that the ice and the liquid on Europa are going through a really rapid mixing process. And that means that the probability of life arising and living on Europa for long periods of time is much, much greater. Because it means that that liquid has probably been around for a long period of time, rather than it all being ice at one stage, which you wouldn't really expect life to chill out and chill around in. So that was just really, really cool. And if you want to find out more, once again... There are a large number of links on the website. Mm. I, I can't. I can't remember how many wonderful science fiction stories I've read over the years involving uh, Europa and amazing deep sea beasties. Sometimes with tentacles. <laughs> Everyone's very excited. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, Until they get eaten. Well, I'm worth it. I think <laughs> so. So worth it. If if they need someone to go to Europa and get eaten, potentially I'll go. <laughs> um, and and uh, yes, still keeping with undersea beasties because this appears to be just one of those weeks. This was a really really interesting article, and of all things, actually, it was in the Economist this week, which is unusual. Uh, potentially, I don't often find amazing um, science articles in the Economist. Perhaps I'm not looking closely enough. But anyway, moving along. Um, 